Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft. Today is a bit different uh, to my previous episodes. It has been a very long time since I ha since my previous episode. That's because I had to work on my university work, but I'm back now. I'm done. I'm done with university, so I'm back. <clears throat> now, something's really interesting is that now I'm in 1.14. If you're wondering what if you happen to watch the previous episode and you're wondering why I now have a whole bunch of shulker boxes and why all my gear is fully enchanted with everything, it's because I had started recording this episode um, back then, but then I kind of got sidetracked with everything else, so I wasn't able to finish it. So I, I actually still have the recordings, and but the audio was messed up anyway, so I think I, I said I'd just start, just start this episode again and see where it takes me. So an interesting thing... Uh, is that I was able to get a mending villager at the end of the previous episode, which is great. However, now that I'm in 1.14, it's all everything's broken. Uh, well, it has a potential to be broken. Even uh, it's okay for now because they haven't become unemployed. But eventually, unless I put a lectern in behind them or something, they they will eventually become unemployed, and that'll be a problem. But it should become a hell of a lot easier in the future to get a villager with mending books. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, also, this is now broken because they've changed the way villager breeding works. You need to have beds now and it's all complicated. Although there was a couple new baby villagers that spawned not that long ago, but it all needs to be prepared. All right, well, there's one bed nearby, so that maybe was why. And then finally, this over here... My iron farm is going to be broken as well, but I have got plenty of iron, so I'm not massively worried about that. Why is this bit not lit up? Oh, I can't light it up. That's why it's not lit up. Um, so I'm not massively worried about that. It's just that the, again, you need beds and stuff to spawn villagers now. You can't just do it magically with doors and villagers. So yeah, uh, I also cleared out some of this area. I flattened... I flattened out this area ready for my base. I repaired all of my tools. And I also went into the end and did some more gathering and stuff. I, again, I, I, it was all recorded, but because the audio was messed up and it was a long time ago, I decided that I would just restart the episode. So anyway, my plans for this episode would be to continue work on the base, the main base. Oh, missed. Continue work on clearing out that area. Start thinking about... Um, Iron farm, new iron farm designs, because it's important I get an iron farm back up and running. Because although I have some iron, it's not a large amount. It won't last me forever. Um, I quite like to get the, the the surface cleared so I can get this lift in. It's been it's been sitting there for ages with nothing in it, and I'd like to get it in there. So I think my first job will be to get the surface cleared off. Yes. Okay, so the area is now cleared, as you can see, and I'm sure you saw in the time lapse. So after that, I did a bit of housekeeping. So I tidied up all the shrug boxes that were here, emptied them all out, put them all away, that sort of thing. I also fixed up my sugarcane farm because for some reason it had broken. Uh, so unfortunately, I didn't get as much sugarcane from that 
period of time as I should have done. Uh, also fixed up the map in the base so that it's now accurate. And that's all about all I've done in the meantime. So I've decided that my plan for this episode is to start building my base proper. So my plan for the base, I've built it up in the creative world. I'm going to kind of inset it into the ground. So it's like a big, um, it's like kind of like a big hole in the ground, but with a glass roof that's level with the floor. And then it's going to have like modules that kind of build off of that to make kind of like a sort of interesting structure underground and it'll, but it'll all be visible from above ground. So it, it'll be really interesting once I've built it. Uh, it should be quite, it should look quite interesting as well. I hope it looks good, but obviously we'll have to wait and see for that. Uh, my current base was only going to be a temporary build. I mean, I, I honestly really like it, so it's going to stay there, but it was only meant to be like a temporary kind of, that's my, my starter base kind of thing. Uh, maybe after I've done that, next episode or sort of later on in the episode depending on how long it takes me to start building my base i'm gonna i think about building a slime farm i love flying machines and my plans for things like a kelp farm also involve flying machines and the only way currently i have of getting slime is to go and find a swamp and kill slimes there and that's that is too much of a pain i so i think there's a five chunk five chimes five slime chunk area somewhere to the north i don't know it's been a long time since i checked but that'll be roughly where i'm going to put it and then maybe after i've done that or maybe after this episode in between episodes i'll make a i'll try and make a proper plan like a flow diagram of things that i want to do because then i can kind of stick to it because the problem is i make a i make a plan one episode and then i come back the next episode and i've completely forgotten what it was i was planning to do like I, I, so I, if i write it all down then that'll be it'll be better and I'll be able to make a consistent kind of see some consistent progress in my in my base building so okay so I've I've mapped out the area for the first kind of chamber now that it's in context with the rest of the world it's not very big the only thing it is uh, it's going to be quite deep though that is the only thing so it'll um, it'll look bigger once it's done but actually the kind of footprint of the area is not very big um i think it's about i think it's 16 or 15 15 blocks i think by 15 so it's not ma it's not massive but it'll look better once it's kind of dug out uh this is all going to be concrete rather than slabs it is just as a kind of indicator of the area okay so I've been working on the hole for a while, and now it's time for the big reveal. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. So, obviously, I haven't just dug down to here. I've dug out the whole thing, pretty much, apart from the top layer. Great joke, I know, but there we go. So, the hole is now dug out. Uh, so I just, apart from the top layer, obviously, I just need to dig out the top layer. So, I want, what I need to do next is I need to gather some... I need to gather some con some materials for concrete, and then I need to well, I need to make a whole bunch of concrete because I'm going to line the walls with. Um, so I'm going to try and sort of color code different areas of it. So sort of like the main kind of areas are going to be red. Um, farms and stuff are going to be green. Storage, I don't know, blue maybe I don't know. So kind of organize the base into different colors, and sort of the walls are going to be that color. It's going to look. It does look quite nice actually once it's. Um, in the creative world, it does look quite nice, so that's why I went with it. So yeah, so now that the hole, this hole is dug out, uh, almost dug out anyway, uh, I'm gonna go and find a mountain or something that has a lot of gravel on it. Uh, basically, dig it all up, and then I'm gonna make a whole bunch of concrete. I would like to make an automated concrete destroying, like TNT kind of thingy. However, um. I don't know. I'm not very good at making TNT duplicators. I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure why. I, it just never seems to work for me. But that'll be. That'll certainly be something I'll have to do, considering this base is going to require an awful lot of concrete in the future. So that's certainly something to consider on my plans. Okay. So I believe I have everything in my inventory that I'm going to need. So I've got red concrete, grey concrete, wood and glowstone so the only thing that is missing is glass but at the moment as there's no way of getting in and out i'm going to leave it without glass and put the glass on later i uh, i do need some red carpet as well because well, because it kind of it really 
just makes it look a bit nicer with the red carpet but it's not necessary right now and I don't have any wool so that's gonna have to wait for now but anyway so now I have the fun job of making this look pretty okay then so all the wood is in place uh, I've managed to find some string so I can make some carpets it'll look much better once the concrete's in place but it's coming along quite nicely uh, yeah this is kind of the general style of how all of the places in my base are going to be. Where there's stone, apart from here, apart from sort of the doorways, there's going to be concrete. In this case, in this room, it's going to be uh, nice red concrete. Other rooms, that's it'll be different. And obviously, the the carpet will be the colour to match. Yeah, I was quite happy that I managed. I remembered that I've got a mob farm that just has loads of string in it. So, yeah, so it was great. So. The next job, and the final job of this room, I'm not going to put the glass on it as I said before because I, obviously I can't get in and out. But the next job, and the final job to finish off this room, is to put in all the concrete around the edge. Okay then, right, all the concrete is now in, including the stuff at the top. The only thing that's missing is the glass, but it is now time for the grand reveal. It is all done, and it's all ready to go. So, I, oh, you can kind of see it there. Right. I'm going to fly in and then we can see it. It's actually a, a lot smaller than I was anticipating it to be, but it still looks nice. It still looks quite a sort of like a central kind of hub. Kind of, it's, that's, that's what the, this room is mainly. There's a bit of stone there. Central kind of hub room that leads off into everywhere else and kind of acts as like a crossroads. It's also going to be the meeting point of all the farms, because underneath the floor I plan on having ice-based transport systems for uh, my farms and stuff. And then I haven't decided which direction my farms are going to be in. But it'll look a bit better when there's a little bit more to it and it isn't just a, a, a hole in the ground. It isn't chunk aligned, but I'm not too bothered about that. I don't think I would bother with that too much. Although, actually, thinking about it, maybe I should have made it chunk aligned. Um, I'm certainly not going to change that now. But I was thinking maybe I should have made it chunk aligned for when this, I build a slime farm. Because otherwise it's not... Oh, that was silly. I should have done that. It's too late now. Who cares? Um, when it comes to slime farm, I'll just have to do some sort of fancy paths or something that kind of... To make it not noticeable that it's not chunk aligned, basically. So, this bit is done. Um, I don't know how much time I have left on the video, so I'm going to start looking into other projects that I can work on. So I'm going to have a look at the slime farm, and maybe plan out where it's going to be. I'm not going to dig it out by hand this time. I dug this out by hand because it's not very big, it's not very deep. Whereas the slime farm, it goes all the way down, and it's going to be more than one chunk big. This is less than a chunk in size. I'm, I might use like a TNT dropper or something to dig it out because that's more interesting anyway more interesting to watch um, but actually it didn't take very long to dig this out it took longer to build everything than it did to dig it all out it, the, the wooden frame took considerably longer than I was expecting it to do to, which is a bit surprising and then I used I think it was more like 10 stacks of um, red concrete I think in the end or maybe more than that, like more like 12 stacks of red concrete, which is a lot more concrete than I anticipated, because I started off with 8. So, yeah. Anyway, so I'm, I'm going to go and have a look at the slime farm, investigate uh, what, where I can put, um, put my slime chunks and that sort of thing. Right then, here we are at the slime chunks. Quite a nice slime chunk, not too far away. I've outlined them in stone slabs so that I know roughly where I'm going to be digging. I'm going to dig them out. Uh, with TNT, I think, because this is far too much to dig out by hand, and I can't be bothered with it. Actually, now I think about it, oh, I'm, I'm going to die if I keep falling off this. Now I think about it, I might include this chunk as well, because that way I can I have a space for some store for storage room, for, for a storage room even. So you've got the three chunks, one, two, three. I've chosen these ones because uh, in the way they're laid out. I feel like they're, they're least likely to interfere with each other too much. And also it means I can put the walls in and stuff and have the golems or whatever it is I'm going to do relatively easy. It's going to be relatively easy to put them in this way. Uh, oh, 
There's a village. I didn't know there was a village over there. That's a lot closer to the one I actually went to in the end. But anyway, so my next plan is gather up a whole bunch of TNT, uh, build a bunch of droppers, set up some TNT lines, and then probably AFK or something while it mines it all out. Right then, so I've built some scaffolding for all the dispensers to go on to when we mine out the slime chunks with the TNT. However, I was a bit silly and I used the last of my cobblestone making 35 droppers rather than 35 dispensers. <laughs> Which means that I need cobblestone now and I also need string and stuff to make bows but that's a different matter. Um, so, slight change of plans. The rest of this episode, for the rest of this episode, I'm going to build a TNT-powered cobblestone generator uh, using a TNT duper, which, make, which is a nice opportunity for me to investigate why I can't make a working TNT duper. And at the end of the day, having a nice, sustainable source of cobblestone will be really useful later on, especially when it comes if I want to make other things. Like with cobblestone, like potentially droppers and dispensers, and cobblestone is just useful. It's useful for scaffolding. It's useful for other things. I imagine I can't think of anything else off my head, but it'll be good. I'll have to come up with a good place to put it, um, because I don't want it too near anything. I might just, I might put it some, I might put it over here to be honest, far away from my actual base and kind of with the rest of the farms. It'll be right. The t the villagers will be fine. They they'll be far enough away that they won't get blown up. And if they do anyway, they are. That one seems to have lost its job. Anyway, I think I'm surprised that they're still. Um, oh, I was gonna say I'm surprised that they're still librarians, but I can't open the trade window. It won't let me. It closes immediately. Well, that's helpful. Anyway, so on with building a TNT duper. Not TNT duper cobblestone generator. Right then, so I'm back from gathering lots of resources. I managed to get myself a whole bunch of wood, a whole bunch of concrete and a whole bunch of redstone resources. Uh, obviously nothing that requires cobblestone because that's the entire point of this cobblestone generator. I had to go and get myself some slime blocks so I went and hung out in a swamp for a few days. Did you know that slimes can't don't spawn in swamps on a new moon? And the phasing and the moon phases affects the slime spawning. I didn't know that. So I went there. The first night I went there, it was a new moon and no slime spawned. And I was there for ages. And it was, oh, it took me forever to get slimes. Also, did you know that they don't spawn in swamp hills either? So that was a fun hour of my life flying around swamp hills wasted. So anyway, I've decided that that area probably isn't big enough. So what I might do... I might build it over this lake thingy. Pretty much everything on the surface will eventually get demolished. But for now, there's a nice big open space. Not too close to anything. I mean, I could put it above the nether portal. But I think it'll look quite nice above the water. I think it'll kind of just... It'll just look good. It'll just look better there. So, I think I might do a time lapse of this. Um, in some form or another. Because... I'll, Progress updates are not the most exciting thing in the world. There's a time lapse in so you can see everything going on. So, let's get on with building.
Okay, so the cobblestone generator is now done. It works quite nicely. It does. It hasn't broken once, which I'm quite happy about. The only thing I have done is I've added a little lever here so that I can turn it on and off from down here rather than have to fly up there and turn it off. I've the design I've used. I've well, I've kind of came up with my own kind of design for it, uh, but it's something I can expand with two more of these modules. All the redstone is up here is already ready for just expanding anyway, so it's nothing. Wouldn't be too much hassle to expand it further. I'm quite happy with the way that I've with the little funnel here, because even though it doesn't look like it from down here, it will actually land in the middle of the obsidian block every time because it kind of corrects itself, which is a bit strange. But it just means it's always central and it's always going to explode all the blocks evenly, because I. I was a bit worried that there might, if, if it wasn't centralised, there might be some bits where it was, wasn't quite sufficient. So, I've got loads of cobblestone already. Like I, you saw me turn it on, and I've already got a few stacks of cobblestones. This is already going pretty well. So, the next thing on my list, I need to make a whole bunch of dispensers so that I can build up the TNT dispenser array over the slime farm to clear it all out, ready to build up the slime farm platforms and build up the storage room and things like that. I was debating I might uh, debating using these as a method to just duplicate the TNT rather than building dispensers. But the problem is is that they require seven slime blocks each and I don't have enough slime. Once I've got a slime farm, if ever I need to clear out an area, then I will probably use these. I'll use the TNT dispensers, but until then I'm just gonna have to stick with the uh, the dispensers themselves. So anyway, I'm going to go make some dispensers, and then I'll be back in a moment. Okay then, so, all the TNT and dispensers are now in place. All the dispensers have half a stack of TNT in them. It took a lot longer to get this all set up than I thought it would, uh, partly because making this thing was a bit fiddly, and I also had to go and get more gunpowder to make more TNT. It uses a lot more TNT than I thought it would. But I wanted to make sure they all had a half a stack in there just in case. I've also cleared out some of the higher trees, so hopefully it won't blow itself up. And I think it's ready to go. I think. I'm a bit nervous it's all just going to explode or something like that. But, right. Are we ready? Let's do it. Let's go. Oh, look, there we go. Oh, that's way too fast. No, don't want to fall in there, don't want to fall in there, don't... Whoa, okay, that, that was that was really scary. Um... Oh, no, it's way too fast. Oh... I didn't adjust the timing. <laughs> I mean, it's already made some pretty good progress on the thing, but now... I was going to say, I have run out of TNT already for those few that... Uh, well, I'll let this... Well, it's making some pretty good progress, but now I need to... I, I need to repair everything. Oh, I've lost so much TNT as well. Okay, well, it seems like half a stack is not enough, but then to be fair, it was kind of just throwing them out. I really should have... Oh, I should have adjusted the timings. That's so frustrating. Oh man, right. Let's go fix this up. Right then, so I've repaired the scaffolding with all the redstone on it. And also I've also repaired a few few holes in the outline here. I've also up slightly improved the redstone timing in the redstone circuitry so that all the dispensers will fire at the same time. Uh, because if you have two dispensers firing at different times, the TNT will blow itself around and it'll just it'll just cause chaos. So hopefully this will prevent chaos from happening when I uh, try and clear this out. At the moment, I don't have very much TNT, so I need to get more. I only have enough for about probably like 10 per dispenser and that's certainly not enough. I'm thinking I probably want about a stack per dispenser. So what I'm gonna do is between episodes, I'm gonna go and stand over there and get a whole bunch of gunpowder and also go and grab a whole bunch of sand and then hopefully in the next episode we'll have enough gunpowder to get all this cleared out not gunpowder, TNT to get all of this cleared out right down to bedrock and then we can then tidy up the edges and all that sort of stuff and get the slime farm going it's been quite a productive episode today obviously we've built the scaffolding for this 
uh, got this all ready to go. It all exploded and then rebuilt it. Uh, we've also dug out the start of my base, the final base, the, the main hub bit. And we've also built the cobblestone generator, so it's been quite good. There's a few other things I've noticed that I would be good to get done sooner rather than later would be to improve the storage of my mob farm. Because the problem is, is there's not enough storage for everything, so I'm limited on how much on how much gunpowder I can get because they're all the chests are full. So I need to improve this storage, just make it bigger or anything like that. Some or just just give me more storage space. So that's certainly something I can do next episode. Um, and potentially even work on a villager breeder as well would be good. So I can get some more men get some more books. But anyway, so that's that's for the future. Uh, for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!